Hey everyone, this is Colonel once again, back with another video from Monster Hunter World Iceborne. So in today's video, we are going to be exploring the newest Elder Dragon announced for Monster Hunter World Iceborne, which is none other than the Safi Jiva itself. Now, the reason we are exploring the Safi Jiva yet again for this particular video is because there is a lot of confusion as to how the two Elder Dragons are related, the Xeno Jiva and the Safi Jiva. A lot of people are saying that there can't be a relation between these two elder dragons because they look drastically different and to be quite honest i understand their viewpoint because when you look at the xeno jiva and the safi jiva from the basic shape and silhouette perspective they have a lot of things that they share in common but when you look at the anatomy of the safi jiva itself it looks drastically different to that of the xeno jiva there's a lot of changes in its anatomy that has occurred over time that just doesn't make it look like a xeno jiva anymore Yes, shape and silhouette overall, they remain the same, but a lot of the anatomy that the Xeno Jiva had, such as the flaring skin for example, that's no longer present in the Safi Jiva itself. So how did that occur exactly? What made the change between the Xeno Jiva and the Safi Jiva as the Xeno Jiva itself was maturing into the Safi Jiva itself? Let's go ahead and find out. Now before we go ahead and go through the explanation of what transition happens between Zeno Jiva and Safi Jiva, let's go ahead and explore the explanation in the game itself. In the game, Capcom themselves explain it via the cutscene in which the Zeno Jiva itself transitioned into Safi Jiva via skin shedding. However, I don't think this is the full explanation because in reality, when a creature sheds its skin, the anatomy doesn't change completely. In fact, we see this in snakes most prominently. The snakes themselves, when they shed their skin, the only thing that happens to their body is it gets bigger. So the skin shedding occurs because the body is too big for that current skin. And they remove the skin to accommodate for the new skin. So most times, there's no changes in anatomy. There's just completely no change whatsoever. Maybe there's a change in the pattern of the snake itself, a slight change in the skin pattern. But for the most part, I don't really see any major changes happening in terms of its anatomy. It maintains it relatively the same. And in the game as of right now, throughout the Monster Hunter series as a whole, there is a creature that does the exact same thing, which is the Kushala Daura. The Kushala Daura sheds its skin, but after shedding its skin, it maintains the exact same anatomy. In fact, there is a cutscene back in Monster Hunter 2, or rather Monster Hunter Freedom 2, that shows the ecology of the Kushala Daura itself, showing that when it sheds its skin, it goes through a slight moment of its skin being exposed, its fleshy skin being exposed until it gets covered up by the metallic skin that it has usually. So it didn't change any of its anatomy. Just for a sheer moment, it was exposed, meaning that it had no metallic skin on it. But the metallic skin grows afterwards, maintaining the exact same anatomy throughout the most part of the Kushala Daura shedding its skin. So overall, as you can see, shedding the skin doesn't exactly explain everything when it comes to transitioning from one monster into another. So what does explain it? Well, the main way to explain it is the state of metamorphosis. Now this is where we start to really see how one monster is transitioning into another monster despite two monsters not looking the same as each other. This is most prominent on real life when it comes to certain creatures such as tadpoles growing into frogs, caterpillars growing into butterflies or moths, and most importantly, and this is going to be the one I'm going to be using as an explanation for the Xeno Jiva and Safi Jiva. We have nymphs growing into dragonflies. Now, I'm going to be using the nymph to dragonfly explanation because the nymph to dragonfly explanation is the closest thing I can relate to when it comes to Xeno Jiva transitioning to Safi Jiva. If a nymph itself is ready to grow into a dragonfly, what generally happens is the nymph's skin will start to break away, revealing the dragonfly itself. This means that the nymph skin that it originally had is maintained. This is something that we see when it comes to the Xeno Jiva in the cutscene. We see the Xeno Jiva skin maintained at the ravine itself. So we still see the Xeno Jiva skin. Now when it's transitioning from that into a dragonfly, you see huge changes in the nymph's anatomy because it's now a dragonfly instead of a nymph. This could be the explanation as to why the Xeno Jiva skin was there first and foremost and why the Safi Jiva itself looks drastically different from the Xeno Jiva form. So as it's constantly going through the skin shedding, eventually it went through a stage of metamorphosis where it removed its Xeno Jiva exoskeleton, so the Xeno Jiva form, and then the Safi Jiva form was revealed. 
So this is most likely the case scenario that happened. So the Nif into Dragonfly explanation is the best thing I can use when it comes to explaining the Xenojiva into Safijiva transition. So the stage of metamorphosis between a nymph growing into a dragonfly is the same scenario as a Xenojiva growing into a Safijiva. So overall, I hope that kind of explains the situation. Capcom did not explain this very well in the game itself, which is quite disappointing in my personal opinion because if they say it's shedding its skin, that's one thing, but that doesn't change the overall anatomy of a creature itself as we've seen in real life when it comes to snakes and as we've seen in the game when it comes to Kushala Daura. However, if you go through a stage of metamorphosis, then that is something completely different. In fact, I completely forgot an example in the game itself as well. In my previous video, I spoke about this when it came to my theory video, I spoke about the Gormagala and Chigaru Magala. The Gormagala itself does actually go through a stage of metamorphosis in which the Gormagala itself transitions into Shigata Magala, very similar again to that of a nymph growing into a dragonfly. It sheds its skin and the new form is revealed. So again, we have seen it not only in reality now, but in the game itself. So the stage of metamorphosis is the best explanation as to why the Xenojiva itself looks drastically different to that of the Safijiva because the Xenojiva form is the nymph state of this particular elder dragon and the Safijiva state is the dragonfly form of this particular elder dragon. So overall, that will explain the particular transition between the Xenojiva and the Safijiva itself. Now that is pretty much it for me for this video. I hope you found this particular video informative and I hope it does answer the question of how the two monsters are related to one another because there is an explanation for it. It's just that Capcom completely went over it and just didn't explain it in the game itself. And I'm really hoping that we do get more information on that in the game itself so that we have an understanding as to what's happening between the transition from Xenojiva into Safijiva itself. Now that is pretty much it for me for this video. If you enjoy these videos, please feel free to leave a like on the video itself as well as subscribe to the channel so you can go ahead and catch up on any future Monster Hunter content that I might be doing as well as any other games that I might be playing in future. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Onward and upward.